Hi, I'm David DeHaas of Living Waters Wellness Center, and welcome to the Whole Body Detox Show. I'm your host today. Living Waters Wellness Center is a Treasure Valley's largest colon hydrotherapy center and best known for a 10-day cleanse and healing retreat. To learn more about colon hydrotherapy and detoxifying the body, go to livingwatercleanse.com. Watch the webinar, The Four Natural Laws of Healing. I was once a medical refugee seeking out how to heal my body. By the age of 30, I was suffering from numerous symptoms, including allergies, severe fatigue, constipation, brain fog, joint pain, back pain, psoriasis, acne, and eventually cancer. I spent about 20 years learning how to heal my body. Now I teach others how they can recover using the four natural laws of healing. Each week, we bring you the information you need to discern how you can heal your body. Welcome to the show. The information is presented for educational purposes only, is not intended to diagnose or prescribe for any medical or psychological condition, nor to prevent, treat, mitigate, or cure such conditions. This information is only presented here for entertainment and educational purposes only. Good morning, everyone. David DeHaas from Living Waters on the Whole Body Detox Show. Excited to bring you today's program. Today I have in the studio with me Jim Zamzo, who most of you know is the lawn and garden guru, but he's also very well versed in nutrition. And so today's program is entitled From the Soil to the Gut. Jim, thanks for stepping in and sharing your wisdom. I'm glad to be here, David. Hope I have some. You have tons. I know. We've talked plenty. <laughs> You're always a fresh, uh, a great, uh, always bring me new, new information, which is fantastic. Good. So let's talk about you got years ago involved in, of course, your family's business, Samzo's. Yes. And uh, was that something that you was gravitated to or was there or what got you interested in nutrition and the soils and all that good stuff? Well, I was interested in nutrition from an early, early day. I had asthma as a child and the cure for asthma in the 50s was penicillin. So they gave me a penicillin shot every day. Every day? Every day. Oh and my gosh. Those great big chrome syringes with the glass tubes and the needle about that long and I got to where I, I would hide. I knew my parents were going to take me to the doctor, so I would hide. And I found some creative places to hide, too. But they eventually found me. And so the doctors decided, well, if, uh, if he's not going to come in, then we'll teach you how to do it. And so I can remember the doctor even came to the house, and he got an orange. And we're all sitting around there, and he's showing my parents how to stick a two-inch needle into an orange. Uh, which probably caused me to freak out more than anything. But then my parents continued to hold me down, give me a shot of penicillin. And ultimately, as you know, that much penicillin destroys everything. How long, get, how long did that go on get, for? Oh, about a year. Oh, my. Every day. I, I was just, it was just pathetic. Oh. And you were so, how old is that? Three. Three. So then I got, of course, I went from asthma to... Uh, God knows what else. You know, I just wasn't well at all as a child. Right. And the further along we went, the the more medicine I got, and the more medicine I got, it seems like the sicker that I got. Well, finally they just gave up on me, literally. I think my grandmother told me one time, she said, we, we really didn't think you were going to live. And I said, well, I probably wouldn't have if you hadn't stopped giving me all that medicine. <laughs> so... Uh, I was very interested in food that Dad raised in the garden and how I ate. I preferred to eat the vegetables and things like that. And then fast forward, of course, I made mud pies and I loved the soil. And I, I started gardening even as a little kid. I, I destroyed my dad's garden several times by getting his uh, everything out of whack. You know, he had my dad being a German, he, he really liked everything in order and in lines and when I'd go out and pull a, a furrow, I would just pull a hole. It would look like a snake. <laughs> but he never had the courage to tear it out. So when I planted something, he'd leave it in there. So, so I, that's where I got interested, I guess. Wow, what a story. Well, I, kind of similar. I, mine was uh, allergy shots. Uh -huh. Two or three of those a week. Yeah. Well, I, went, I had to go through that, too, of course, in my early days. Because right. asthma goes into allergies. And then... Uh, I went down, I was working in the feed mill for dad when I was 14, and I oh. had terrible allergy. Oh, yeah. We had the feed mill in Meridian. All that dust. And finally, uh, 
dad said, well, I'm going to take you down to the dock and we'll get you fixed up. So he took me down, down on Harrison Boulevard somewhere. But the old doc said, yeah, we can fix you up. So he gave me a shot of Kenalog in the fanny. What's yeah. that? It's a, it's a steroid. Okay. And uh, boy, my allergies went away. It was wonderful. But I'm working in a feed mill, you know, you get stronger at that age. You get stronger all the time. And all of a sudden, I started getting weaker. Uh, mm -hmm. But I had no allergies. And every six months, I'd go in and get a Kenalog shot. So finally, one day, after doing this for, for several years, I I'd got, I'd got to where I just couldn't hardly even work. And I asked him, I, I said, would these shots have anything to do with my strength? And he said, oh, yeah. Yeah, it'll cause muscle deterioration. And I said, oh, gosh, well, I don't want to be taking something that causes muscle deterioration. He said, it's your choice. You want allergy or muscle? Because you can't have both. And I thought, no. <laughs> so I, I, I immediately changed it up from that and decided I wasn't going to do Kenalog for allergy shots. And then I was old enough that I started reading about it and realized, Oh, steroids, you know, they're good for some things for sure, but not good for taking on a long-term basis because, and that, that made me weak. And then I got stronger and then I got into my twenties and, and, uh, it was time for me to make a decision on careers. Dad was getting ready to retire. And so I, I'd worked almost all my life in the, in the store. He only at that time had two stores, a store in Fairview and and the mill in Meridian. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had worked, you know, with baby chicks and all that stuff all the years. And so uh, eventually I ended up uh, taking the job with dad and after a little stint in the military and so on. And uh, just kind of latched on to the garden business. We were mostly in the feed and farm business, dad was, but in the early 70s, as Boise started to grow, the farms started disappearing and houses started appearing. And my brother and I just kind of converted that farming experience that we had over to the soils and, and growing lawns and garden. And then we built that business, uh, you know, ever since. And it's, uh, and we're actually getting back into the agriculture business to, to some degree because of, a, of a, actually a serendipitous discovery I had on how to react certain nutrients to make a what we call a colloidal cluster that stays in the soil. Uh, the problem that I've always had with, with chemical fertilization is it's water soluble. And you put it on and if the plant catches it, great, but if you get a lot of water, it washes right down into your aquifer and right on into the river. I figured out how to stabilize a liquid fertilizer where it would stay in the soil using this, this method. And it was God's gift. I'd been working I've been stirring chemicals and stuff in an old black drum with a canoe <laughs> uh, or for, for the longest time. And, uh, and then I started having these interesting things happen. And I, I came upon this discovery. And there have been a lot of people trying to figure out what, what I did. But that's the, you know, people can analyze your products for, for the nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and minerals and stuff like that. But they can't figure out how you got the physical form of the, of the colloid. Uh, and I've had a lot of people that were very interested in, in buying that, but I figured, you know, the fun of any business is the growing it. Sure. So uh, we're, we're doing very well with that. It's actually becoming a national product. We've got, uh, especially the Amish in the Midwest, love the product, and they're a little bit more natural thinking than a lot of, right. a lot of our farmers. Right. And uh, we just shipped our seventh tanker load to one farm. Wow! Back there. Now, is this your chicken soup product? Ch chicken soup for the soil. Chicken yeah. soup for the soil. Okay. Yeah. Is that different, different from the Thrive product? Well, it is. It's it's kind of Thrive on steroids. Okay. Uh, it all happened because I was teaching people how to make compost tea, and you know we have a product called Tomato Boom, and it's got alfalfa and all the proteins and minerals and stuff, and and then we had Thrive, and then we had earthworm castings, and we'd put those all together in a bucket and stir them up and leave them in the hot sun. And after three or four days in the hot sun, we'd strain it off, dilute it 
one to ten and it makes a wonderful soil inoculant stimulates the life in the soil and gets things going and of course it's the life in the soil that releases the nutrients to the plant right well I told these friends uh, this Amish uh, group back there that they needed to do that on their crops and they said okay and so I taught them how to do it and they looked at me like I had two heads and they said we farm 7,000 acres. <laughs> how, how do you expect us to do this on a large scale? Uh, you put this in a multi-thousand gallon tank and then we've got filtration problems and, and plugging our sprayers and, and right. what have you. So I, because I get a lot of feedback from producers, growers of all kinds of things all over the country, uh, I, I kind of know where to access my resources and I took all of the things that we were using as a dry material in that first compost tea, if you will call it, and I put it into a liquid uh, so that they could, all they had to do was put 50 gallons into a 500 gallon tank and blend it and inoculate it with their own good soil or, or with some other good inoculum of bacterium and so on. And that would grow and then they would dilute that and feed it to their to their soil. Well, it's easy now. So they can buy a tanker load of our products, which is 5,000 gallons, and make a tremendous amount of this compost tea, which they spray on their, you know, basic, most of it is certified organic ground. All right. I'm David DeHaas from Living Waters on the Whole Body Detox Show, and we're talking today in the studio with Jim Zamzo, who most of you in the Valley know. He's uh, the proud owner of, how many stores you guys got? 13. 13 stores. Lucky number. I like that number. I was born on the 13th. Yeah. We've been talking about soils. When we last broke, we are talking about what you're applying to soils. And let's talk about that because industrial farming today, we don't ever see any crop rotation. I mean, do we have any live soils on these these big farms where they're, they're, they're putting massive chemicals? I mean, I don't, I don't see any weeds anymore. Growing right. up as a kid, we had always had a few thistles and a few things we'd have to pick. But I call it the killing fields. We, we have a few, and in fact, some of our young farmers are, are starting to get it and go back to a little bit more natural farming. You know what? It, it all started out after the Great Wars. We, we had all these chemicals left over uh, that we made munitions with. And, of course, we hardened the runways down in the South Pacific with uh, anhydrous ammonia, hardens the ground. So the wars are over. They got to do something with these factories. So they build anhydrous ammonia plants to knife into the soil as nitrogen. But of course, at the same time, then it flushes the calcium and the humus out of the soil. That's how they set up these bombing strips, you know, the, the runways down oh, wow. where they could land the big bombers. Yeah. They'd, they'd knife this in the ground, you know, it would make the ground set up like concrete, and then they could land the bombers on them. Well, it makes a, a heck of a fertilizer for nitrogen, but it, it destroys the soil at the same time by setting it up. So that's why a lot of times you'll see if a farm overuses uh, ammonia, anhydrous ammonia or, or aqua ammonia, which is a liquid form, uh, you end up with soil that clods up real bad. It won't plow. Uh, I went up to Fairfield one time and stopped at a friend's farm started using anhydrous and they'd use a what they call a four bottom plow which plows deep and turns the soil over about 18 inches and then ideally you go back through and disc it well he, he plowed it in the fall and hadn't disc it down and i went over just to look at the soil and i tried to kick one of these clods about broke my foot oh my gosh. we just set up just like concrete and i thought what happened to this fairfield soil because it, we used to buy all of our hay from from fairfield uh, it was just wonderful, but so you know, I I, I don't like to to talk down fertilizer because fertilizer is important. We need fertilizer. The problem that we have with it is the overuse of fertilizer and the getting uh, nutrients out of balance with the natural stuff in the soil, the carbon, the humus in the soil, the stuff that makes soil black, that feeds the bacteria and the fungus in the soil that makes the soil hold water, but it also, these uh, natural beneficial fungi actually produce antibiotics and so do the bacteria. For example, 
uh, strep in the soil produces streptomycin, which protects the, strep, the streptococcus, the bacterium, but at the same time, it protects the plants. Ah. And, that's, and as you know, if you take streptomycin or, or any, any of the extracts of the microorganisms, penicillin and, and those, they will kill negative uh, microbes in your body and get you back on track a little bit for a while. Again, as long as they're not overused, like they were with me as a child. Right. So uh, we have to use the proper amounts of nutrients in the soil, especially if we're using water-soluble, imbalance with carbon and the other nutrients, especially the minerals. Uh, one of the reasons that our nation and the world right now are becoming more and more unhealthy is because of our farming practices. It's because we have depleted our soils of available minerals. And we, we've done that through the use of chemicals. So you talk about having these fields being uh, weed-free. Right. That comes from uh, what we call Roundup Ready, the, the GMO right. uh, crops. Uh, they, they're, they are bred so that they can tolerate the Roundup. And the weeds can't. The unfortunate thing is, is they spray this Roundup multiple times during the season across this, I mean, literally millions of pounds of right. this product is going down. And what a lot of people don't realize is that Roundup or glyphosate is a powerful chelator, which means it will bind. And so it, it binds the trace minerals in the soil and makes them unavailable. That's how it kills weeds. Wow. And then when we get that in our bodies, uh, and, and this one is really interesting to me uh, when it comes to, to our problems with reproduction, uh, manganese is the mineral that I call the female mineral. Without manganese, we get no ovulation, we get very little conception actually, and we certainly don't carry any, any ovum full term, if you will. Uh, and that's how you make seedless watermelons. You breed a seedless watermelon where it can't absorb manganese and it won't develop any seed. Oh my goodness. So here we are with convenience. <laughs> Get that seedless watermelon so we don't have that spit out seeds. Right. But we're basically... Well, we're... there's no manganese there. So if a woman's diet depended on watermelons for her manganese, which right. is her reproductive... They're, all of the minerals are important, but, but specifically the reproductive minerals... In, in the woman, it's manganese. Not I don't confuse that with magnesium. Right. A lot of people do. It's manganese. And in men, it's zinc. If men don't have adequate zinc, they, they don't have good reproductive performance of any kind. They have all kinds of uh, issues health-wise because it is an immune mineral. We know that if we take plenty of zinc along with our C and our D3 and some of the other minerals, we build our immune system so we don't have these plaguing viruses that we have. And I'll just leave it at that. Yes. <laughs> I think everyone may know what that hint is. Hint, hint. <laughs> so uh, we become minerally depleted. And then we end up with all of these degenerative diseases. Right. It's just rampant. There's almost with every degenerative disease that we have in our body. It is attached to a mineral uh, one way or the other, either an excess, which, which causes toxicity, or a deficiency. I have a friend in Weezer who, uh, who has prostate cancer. I've been uh, speaking with him the last few days, and I, I said, you know, John, we know that, especially with prostate cancer, but in all cancers, selenium, the mineral selenium is critical. Uh, we almost never have selenium in in tumors. And I, I said, you, you, we really need to try to boost your, your selenium. Now, of course, he's going to his oncologist, and they're getting ready to radiate him and do all of that kind of stuff. But I, I would like to support him uh, nutritionally to, to try to help resolve some of these issues. And, uh, and I said, John, you need good, clean water. That's what, very important that you drink good, clean water all the time. Do you drink your tap water? And he said, yes, I, I do. I drink our well water. 
And I said, well, what's it like? He said, well, it's real high in arsenic. Oh, my gosh. I said, well, you know, arsenic, believe it or not, is not terrible because some we do have a need for arsenic. I remember they used to show horses and put a little arsenic in and make their, make their hair just shine, you know. But the thing that, that hit me was arsenic is antidotal to selenium. And believe it or not, selenium is antidotal to, to, to arsenic. In other words, if you have arsenic poisoning, they usually use selenium to suppress arsenic in the body. But arsenic suppresses selenium. Well, selenium is implicated in prostate health. And he's drinking high arsenic water, which suppresses selenium. So, you know, when you kind of follow it down the red brick road, you, you come up with some things that could be helpful. We're talking with Jim Zamzo, uh, and we're talking about nutrition, soils to the gut. We haven't even got close to the gut yet, but we're going to get there. <laughs> and stay tuned, because he's got a great story about dementia and Alzheimer's, a little concoction that he shared with me, which you're going to want to hear about. This is really cool stuff on stimulating the brain. We'll be back in just a moment. I'm David DeHaas on the Whole Body Detox Show. Stay tuned. You can't treat the body and heal it a piece at a time. You have to treat the whole body naturally. That's why Living Waters Wellness Center 10-Day Healing Retreat is so successful in helping what I call the incurables back to wellness. Here's what a few clients had to say about their experience at Living Waters Wellness Center. For over a year, I've been dealing with gas pains, stomach pains, and been waking me up in the middle of the night so I never get a full night's rest. And last night after my first colonics, I slept through the entire night without any stomach pain or any kind of issues. I suffered from migraine headaches for 12 years, once a month. And since I did the 10 day retreat at Living Waters Wellness Center eight years ago, I have not even had a migraine. I've not even had a headache. I had back pain on my left side for about 20, 25 years. After the 10 day healing retreat, the pain is completely gone. To learn more about the 10 day healing retreat, go to healingtheincurables.com or call the office at 208 378 9911. That's 208 378 9911. The preceding examples may not be typical of your experience and may not be right for you. Seek the opinion of a qualified healthcare professional before determining if cleansing is right for you. Okay, I'm back with, uh, and today we're talking on the Whole Body Detox Show with Jim Zamzo. We've been talking about from the soil to the gut. We're talking about nutrition. Right now we're talking about nutrition in the soil. We left off. Well, we're going to go up to sweet Nola. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> back in the 50s, uh, my dad and his uh, formulator at the mill had discovered that that the animals up in the Sweet and Ola area in particular were, were having a lot of problems with what we call nutritional muscular dystrophy or white muscle disease. And they figured out that if they could supplement with selenium and vitamin E, that they could actually stop the, the process. They couldn't cure older animals that had white muscle disease, but they could they could prevent it in their calves if the cow got it. And uh, it, they uh, could stop the progression in the babies and the progression in the, the adults, and they could prevent it in the, the newborns. And that, that just always fascinated me, that Dad figured that out. And that, of course, I think others across the, the nation were doing the same thing at the, at the same time. But I started studying muscular dystrophy in animals and it looks to me to be the same thing in humans it's a neuromuscular disease it's uh there's selenium has to be implicated in human muscular dystrophy and yet to try to talk uh, to the medical profession about a nutrient that might possibly cure it is a very difficult thing to do because they're trained to to ameliorate symptoms with drugs to, you know, right. to stop the, the right. progression of a disease or or uh, to stop the pain but we're not doing a whole lot in our medical profession to prevent disease and I think if we start recognizing that maybe uh, if we increase our selenium levels in our, our precancerous situations especially prostate cancer with selenium uh, that we might help a lot of people and we may even save a few lives uh, so I, I hope someone out there is hearing this because this is very important stuff and it's hard to share. 
So, about, you know, it goes much further than selenium, but that's right. just one little trigger point. What about uh, MS, multiple sclerosis? Well, all of the neuromuscular diseases, Parkinson's. It, it's, it's implicated. Uh, it's all a myelin sheath that type of a thing, the right. deterioration of the myelin sheath. Right. Uh, we have all those kinds of issues. And then that kind of brings us to the to the Alzheimer's story that you wanted me right. to tell you. Right, this is a good story. <laughs> so... <laughs> My wife's grandmother was was going through the stages of Alzheimer's, and uh, we went to the nursing home and kind of saw this happening. Well, we got to stage four where she was practically comatose, and she wouldn't talk to us when we'd go in, and and but my wife would continue to talk to her because she said, you know, I think Grandma's listening to me even though she's not acknowledging it. So we right. would we would be in there, and they would talk to her for a period of time, and then. Uh, then we'd go home. One day we went in there, and Grandma was loquacious. She was just talking up a storm, and everything seemed normal. And I just, I thought, what in the devil is going on here? So I went down to the nurse's station, and I said, what did you do with this with this woman? And, uh, you know, they were a little defensive. And I said, no, no, well, this is good. It's not, there's nothing wrong. And, and they said, well, let's look. And they looked, and she, they said, well, she had a bladder infection. And so uh, we, we treated her with, a, we actually just gave her a, what, they, what they call hanging a jug on somebody. I think it's an IV treatment. On, in the horse business, we call it hanging a jug on them. <laughs> but, so I don't know they hung a jug on grandma. And I said, okay, well, what was in there? And they said it was dextrose and sodium chloride. So I said, salt and sugar. Crazy. So I thought, well, this must be an electrolyte issue of some kind. So I went home and I got some natural trace mineral salt and some uh, some extract from uh, natural soil, uh, decomposed soil called fulvic acid comes out of uh, linardite and lignite and, you know, the precursors to some of these black things we use in farming called humic acids. Right. Well, fulvic acid is the liquid form and it's a natural chelator. So I put those two together because I'm thinking if we can dissolve that plaque, uh, in, in her in her brain, and we'll have some synapses that start working again. You know, that's a theory. Anyway. Well, I put it in some Welch's cran cran grape or cran raspberry uh, juice and took it over and and I started forcing little sips on her. And at first she didn't want it, but then she started moving her mouth like a little baby moves moves his mouth when they're suckling and. I managed to get a couple of ounces of this stuff in her mouth. And of course, she's her head's hanging down and she's comatose practically. And my wife had been talking all this time and she said, well, Grandma, we've got to leave now. We've got to go to the store. And she raised her head up and said, what you going to buy, honey? And wow. I, you could have bought and sold me for a nickel. I mean, the hair went up on the back of my neck. I thought, I'm on to something. When was the last time she had had any expression of, of verbally? Oh gosh, months. Months. Yeah. Wow. And that, and in fact, at the, you know, in, in fourth stage Alzheimer's, and at that time they didn't have some of the drugs we have today, but right. she was really uh, going downhill fast. And anyway, it was uh, it was one of those things that physicians wouldn't accept it at the nursing home because it wasn't authorized, and the, the nurses wouldn't give it to her anyway. Ugh. So uh, I could get the family once in a while to give her some of when we go over there. But it was just one of those things. And I understand their policies. They, they don't allow stuff like that in. But in her case, I, you know, it, it worked. So I called my friend, Dr. Ashmead, who was the president of Albion Laboratories down in Clearfield. Yeah. He, he forgot more about minerals than I'll ever learn. And I told him this story. And he said, oh, my gosh, Jim, that's wonderful. Said I, he said, I, if you'll tell me how you did it, I'll put it together. We'll do some research at the University of Utah, Utah Medical School in Weber State. He's, he was well-connected with both of those universities for research. And he had the money to pull it off. And uh, before we could get that done, Harvey in his mid-80s passed away. So we, we never got to, oh, to do the research on that. But I've told that to so many people. Uh that's a, that makes a really pretty good tonic, right? You know, and you don't have to use a lot of it. But we're, that there's high trace minerals in these natural pink trace mineral salts, right? You know, there's a the, the one that comes out of 
southern Utah we call Redmond, and then there's the, the Himalayan. Those are both good. They're pink because they have, they're loaded with trace minerals, not just sodium chloride. And they're salt, they're good salts, as opposed, as opposed to white salt that's been bleached and treated so that it won't absorb water, which is what salt's supposed to do. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, we don't so, know what we're getting when we yeah, get so, so rid of table we, salt. Yeah, we, we, so we know that these, these pink salts are, are pretty good, you know. And uh, so it acts as a tonic. It puts trace minerals into the body. Uh, so many of our elders, even though uh, we know that sodium chloride is important in the body as an electrolyte, they're put on salt-restricted diets, and sometimes I think to the extreme, because the body has to have a balance of calcium, magnesium, potassium, and sodium. Those are the cations. Those are the uh, those are all of the electrolytes that are important for good sports, good athletes, right. yeah. just good health generally. But they have to be in balance. If you have too much sodium chloride, of course, you're going to throw some of the other ones off, and vice versa. That's and that's the same formula, by the way, as we have in the uh, in farming. I'm David DeHaas from Living Waters on the Home Bio Detox Show, and I have special guest Jim Zamza. And we've been talking about soil nutrition, nutrition for the soils. So we have plants that are good to feed us. But let's talk about, let's, back, let's circle back to when you destroyed, your gut was destroyed with all, the, all that penicillin that you took years ago. I just had someone in yesterday. My gosh, I think. Most of her life, she's been on antibiotics, mm -hmm. and just the microbiome, of course, is destroyed. Let's talk about, we talked about the biome of the soil. Let's talk about the internal biome. I know you're aware of it, you know, cleansing and so forth, and let's talk about that. So how do we restore this microbiome, and how do we clean out these toxins? <laughs> well, <laughs> if we're going to start down the road where we're already in trouble, uh, uh, you, you know that I am a big proponent of of colon hydrotherapy. I think that what, what you are doing to help people learn how to detoxify their colon by literally washing it out right. uh, is really the best place to start because once we get into trouble, we get a congested digestive system, we get blockages in there, our, our body can't absorb the nutrients necessary from the digestive system, so we eat a lot, we build up a lot of, of debris in our digestive tract, our colon specifically, plus the rest of our body. Because right. when it plugs up, it's like uh, if you have a nice running diesel engine and the kids go shove a potato up the exhaust pipe, the engine quits. And it might be a perfectly tuned and, and, and very good fuel, but it can't operate unless it has a good exhaust system. And the human body is the same way. And, course definitely animals i mean i've worked with horses many many years and we know if we don't keep that digestion going all right yeah we're, we're in trouble they get colicky and and so on so we get it cleaned out then we start getting the right nutrients in there that are necessary living nutrients and nutrients that are raised in a healthy soil and that's really the key because i believe life comes from the soil definitely uh, yeah. if we don't get our soils back and get them living and and Quit putting poisons into them, which eventually get into our bodies and destroy the, the biome in the gut. So our bodies are really made up more of microbes than they are of human cells, and very few people really realize that. That is, I think, five pounds. So yeah, that's in the digestive system. Mm -hmm. Five pounds, <laughs> and, and half of them are about half as viruses. We, Pe we, people are freaking out about viruses, but yeah. we got yeah. a lot of them in our body. <laughs> well, we we live because we've got all of this microbial activity functioning in our body. It's on our eyes. It's cleaning up our eyes, our sinuses, in our mouths, throat. Those are the little soldiers that are working along with our immune system to, to, to keep us healthy. Well, we can't absorb nutrients in our body unless we have the enzymatic bacterial function in our digestive system. And if it's all plugged up, they can't function. It's just like the soil. If you don't have life going in the soil, digesting all of these minerals and stuff so that the plant can eat them, so that they can in turn turn them into food that, that we can digest, then you're in trouble. Let's so, go back just a little bit because we mentioned something. This comes up a lot. 
especially with people who went to their doctor. Uh, we talk about washing out the gut with colon hydrotherapy. That the big question that comes up, well, aren't you clearing out all the good bacteria? Well, my answer is you've already destroyed it. Yeah. The truth of the matter is, is, uh, and, and Louis Pasteur said this on his deathbed, it's, it's not about the, the dangerous bacterium. It's, a, it's about the substrate, or as he put it, the terrain. So if you change the nutrient level, the pH, the temperature of any, even a Petri dish or in your gut, you will change the microbiome that's there. So you have to change the conditions first. That's why it's a very difficult thing. People say, well, I'll just take probiotics and you're okay. Right. Well, taking probiotics, a teacher one of mine one time said when the shuttles first started running, he said, just taking a probiotic is like putting a bunch of people on a shuttle and flying them to the moon and dumping them out and saying, there, survive. They can't survive <laughs> because they don't have the substrate. They don't have the oxygen, the water, the right. nutrients, everything that's necessary. That's what we have to do for these microbes. The other thing that he taught me was, he said, Jim, think of yourself as a rancher, not as a farmer. And I said, why? And he said, well, just think of, of all the animals that you raise as ones that you can't see. And just don't do anything to harm them. Well, for crying out loud, everything we do, we're, we're harming them. It's a good thing they're tough. because So we have to change the substrate of the gut. In a horse, if I've got a horse that's colicky, that's uh, that, that's just not doing well, that's unthrifty, what I need to do is change the pH of his gut. I can pump probiotics into him all day long. And the same with your dog and everything else. We've got to change what else is going in there so that these microorganisms can live and function properly. But the first thing we got to do, if we're all if we've got 15 pounds of fecal material in our bowel, we've got to get in there and we've got to get over to living waters, honestly, and I tell many, many people that, get over there and get that cleaned out so that you can get started getting better. But don't just depend on that and then go back to doing your own your old business again. You've got to get cleaned up, get going good, and then change your habits. Start eating things and start taking your nutritional supplements. And why should you take nutritional supplements when other professions tell us that we get all we need in the food we eat? Well, that may have been true 200 years ago, but it's not true anymore. Right. And I can prove to you what the analysis of a tomato, the way it is today, if it's raised like we often get, the ones that taste like cardboard. Cardboard, yeah. Uh, versus ones that people raise in their own garden that, that are succulent, delicious, full of lycopene, full of trace minerals, full of vitamin C. That's why they're delicious and that and our body craves that. We don't crave this other stuff. Same way with berries, strawberries. You know, you eat a good strawberry and you go, wow. You know, I go over to Emmett, to, to my two organic strawberry raisers over there when I get strawberries and they raise good ones. Right, you know, yeah. That's, you, you go to Costco, I'm not blaming Costco, but... Yeah, these big, huge strawberries, but they taste like car. I don't even like the strawberry there. It's just well, tastes horrible. sometimes it's it's hit and miss. It is, yeah. Because you have we have good farmers in California that are raising good strawberries, and we do get some sometimes. The problem is, is most of the time they get eaten in California. <laughs> right, I don't get here. <laughs> I've well, seen some wonderful. Well, that brings me up. So uh, I remember meeting you years ago when you were starting your, your. I think dynamite had been going. You're looking for some land. This is way back in the day when I was still in real estate. And we talked about chelated minerals. And, and by the way, just for those listening, we talk about this, the four natural laws of healing. Clean the golem, clean the small intestine, clean up the blood, then give it perfect nutrition. Perfect. Now, I didn't come up with that. That was a statement of V.E. Irons yeah. years ago. Um, and by the way, if you guys haven't watched the video, go to livingwaterscleanse.com. At the very top, it says four natural laws of healing. Watch that video because that's going to give you the big broad basis of how we clean the gut and how we heal the body naturally. So let's talk about these chelated minerals because I remember I had just gotten on some chelated minerals and it was really, I credit it with saving my life long enough to figure out all the other things I had to figure out. And what a big difference that made. And it was, I watched, uh, I think it was Dwayne uh, Ashney talk about this on a little, on a broadcast on a satellite back in 1991. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, we most supplements 
contain what we call inorganic minerals. Yeah. So an inorganic mineral would be like iron oxide. Iron oxide is rust. You, if you took a rusty nail and sucked on it and expected to get much iron out of it, you'd be wrong. You, your body would absorb, if it had enough protein in the stomach at the time, it would absorb about 10% of that iron in the body. The other 90% becomes a toxin because it's an irritant to your organs of elimination. So if, if you're not taking a naturally chelated mineral, and by that I mean it has to be chelated to an organic compound, best if it's an amino acid, a component of protein. So they call those amino acid chelates. Okay. Okay. And there, there are many different kinds. There's, there's actually what we call simple mixes, which are, are the, uh, just, they're just, they just mix uh, amino acids simply in a vat with the trace mineral. And they're not a, a pure chelate. A little bit of it gets chelated by accident because these atoms run into each other, but uh, not by on purpose. Every mineral that comes out of a plant that you eat is chelated, and it's chelated to an amino acid, to a protein. So the plant take the iron that's in the inorganic form, or all the other minerals that are in the rocks, chelate it to an amino acid, and then put it in its fruit or its vegetation for, for mammals primarily, but uh, reptiles as well, for all of us to eat. That's where we get our healthy minerals from. Well, what Dr. Ashmead discovered years ago, when I was on this hunt for the longest time, because I'd done a lot of work with minerals and livestock, and when I ran across him, and he said, so Jim, tell me this, are you using sodium selenide in your feeds? And I said, well, well yeah. And he said, that's an inorganic. Sodium selenide is an inorganic form of selenium. He said, you're getting some absorption, but you're not truly getting good absorption. If you're going to take selenium, it has to be organically bound. Now, in the case of selenium, it can't be properly chelated, but it can be bound by a protein. So if you're looking for selenium, you go to the health food store, you want to look for selenomethionine, methionine being amino acid that's chelating the selenium, or you want to look to what we call a, a yeast bound uh, mineral, a yeast bound mineral because because the yeast produces amino acids most they're pretty good they've got a lot of amino acid chelates in the yeast yeast bound artificial chelates like uh, EDTA uh, some even some of the sugar chelates the, the gluconates uh, those those are not good natural chelates for the body again about, the body will absorb about 10% of them. At 90%, it becomes something the body has to eliminate. So I consider that a toxin. And they accumulate in the liver. That's why we see this, this iron toxicity in the liver. And, that, and you'll hear a medical profession say, don't take any supplementation with iron in it. And I just cringe because they're right on one hand. You shouldn't take any, any supplement that has inorganic iron, iron oxide, iron, sulfate, uh, or uh, the fake chelates, iron fumarate, which they still use in our baby formulas, which is toxic in horses, so I don't know how it can't be in, in humans. Wow. Uh, so, so there are lots and lots of forms out there, and people do label comparisons. They say, well, this thing, this one has 22 milligrams of iron, and this one only has two. Probability the one that has two is probably close to 100% absorbable, where the other one is almost non-absorbable. So it's not about quantity when you're talking about nutrient levels. It's, it's about quality. And so that's really my story on, on amino acid chelates, but well, I, uh, there's so much more to yeah, it. I've experienced that years ago when I, well, when I first got on the product that had the, the Ashmean chelates. Yeah. And at that same time, you know, I met you, and you mentioned briefly some stuff about it, and then I was at a uh, Bible study fellowship program, and I was in a line with this guy, and he worked for Simplot. And it just, the subject came out of nowhere, and he talked about stopping scours in their herds yeah. when they gave them the chelates. Yeah. Made a huge difference. And he says, about time they started doing it for human beings. Well, I think you've been doing it now. You started dynamite marketing years ago. Yeah, was it originally? 1982. 1982. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, was that originally for, for just for animals, or was it for also for human consumption? Just for horses. Just for horses. Started off with just a horse supplement called Dynamite Horse Supplement. I worked with all the trainers down here at Les Bois at the yeah. time, and they they would I'd, I'd mix up a batch and send them down with it, and they'd say, "Oh no, it'd make them too hot," or "No, it makes them too sleepy," or you know. And so, I, with through trial and error, we worked into these formulas. They look good on paper, but you don't know what they're going to do once they get into the animals. So you right. have to do that that kind of research. Finally, uh, a fellow by the name of Orville Horst, he was a good friend of mine and a good feed customer, and he came in one time, he said, Jim, that last formula, that formula 812 you gave me? And I said, yeah, and he said, that's dynamite. So I said, Orville, can I have that name? So I trademarked it. I'll be so That's how we ended up with dynamite marketing. And a lot of people say, oh, dynamite, I don't need my horses to be any hotter than they already are, but that's kind of a misnomer. It's right. Just the, the name of the company, right? Right. Well, and you, and you see it. There's so many people are, you, you see it in their skin, complexion, you know, eyesight diminishing way too soon, uh, just because of not getting the proper nutrition. And part of it, of course, is they're plugged up. Yeah. yeah. And it's really important to get unplugged. Nothing yeah. easier than doing colon hydrotherapy to do that. I mean, it's just the easiest, fastest, cleanest way to do it. And, and so many people are, of course, they, we see them in here. They're taking a lot of uh, magne- magnesium. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a the wrong term. <laughs> magnesium or manganese or anyway, they're, they're taking they're taking it, and it's you know that gives them quick di- you know flushes, but pretty soon now nothing's working, and now they're really bad. So. Well, you need magnesium sulfate if you sulfate if you want to work, clean your bowel out. That's yeah. a that's a real good purgative. It's a good one to get rid of stuff, as you know, and you. Right. In your business, but uh, we use it sometimes if we need to, to clean out a horse or something that's gotten plugged up, and we oil them from one end and we give them magnesium from the other end and, and get them to flush out and get them to functioning properly. Yeah. But, uh, you know, animals are so natural in that they eat really the stuff that they're supposed to. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, that's another story when we get into domestic dog foods and so oh, on, yeah. because then they're. Then we've got an issue, a totally different issue. So, prob- hold another, hold another hold dog on. and cat guts. That's a whole different. That's story. a whole different story. Huh? <laughs> yeah. So you got a book coming out. Yeah, I do. Tell me about uh, it. It's uh, actually Art Greger, our communications director, and myself uh, are publishing it. I uh, used to tell Art a lot of stories as we were trying to come up with advertisements for Zamzos, and I didn't know that he was logging all of these stories. Well, we went down to get his master's degree in communication at Boise State. He actually wrote his thesis of these stories that we that I had told him, Dad had told him, Grandma had told him, and my brother. And uh, so he put it into kind of a basic book for his thesis. And then uh, we've just had it re-edited where it would be readable to the public. And it's it's called, uh, That Reminds Me of a Story, uh, his, Some History of the Zamzo Business. So... There's, a, there's some good stories. There's some, you know, I was kind of a naughty boy in my early days, so there's some of the things <laughs> were... <laughs> so we get... <laughs> yeah, uh, well, so when will that book be, when will they be able to get that book? Uh, it should come off the press it's the 1st of May. So around the 1st of May, we should have it. It will be in the stores. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where we'll all market it. Probably on drjimz.com. Okay. I will have it for shipping out of out of the state. That's D-R-J-I-M-Z dot com. Okay. And that's where we sell the chicken soup out of state also. Oh, okay. So if you want to get your soils boosted, if you're out gardening, that's the place to get that. Now, that's, you you developed that product. When did that go to market, the chicken soup product? Uh, it's been about uh, three or four years ago. Three or four years? Yeah. Okay. It's just uh, the repeat business on it is phenomenal, both in agriculture and in, in horticulture. So. so I can put that on my... My, my cherry trees and my sure. peach trees. Yep. And then I've got this little formula on how to make a tea out of it. You ferment it biologically in a bucket, and then you can dilute it and spray it on your foliage and get you get fuller absorption of the nutrients that are in it. Wow. That's all, that's all on the website, the instructions. On the, the, the DRG? DRJIMZ. Okay. Dr. Jimzy. Fantastic. All right. Well, I know we went over which is fantastic. You got anything you want to add about, uh, we probably keep go all day. <laughs> uh, there's a lot to talk about. 
No, I just, I just hope that uh, people recognize that they're responsible for their own health. And you just can't run out and expect people to give you something that'll get you well. You've got to get yourself well. Get your colon cleaned out. Get on some good nu nutrition. Grow yourself a good garden and grow some of your good food yourself for you and your neighbors. Things will do a lot better for you. Jim, you know, people are out there, you know, really feared up right now due to a certain B word virus. Um, and, and they're going out and, and they're getting this, I don't know what it is. It's not a vaccine, but it's some operating system. How the heck, you, how are we going to detoxify these people? Any ideas? I mean, is there any, anything that you've read that's... You know, as a microbiologist, and I say a frustrated microbiologist, right? Uh, I, I've always been searching for stuff that at, on a microbial level will, will function. And I ran across a, a, an old guy. He's, uh, he's up in central Oregon. In fact, I flew up there not too long ago just to spend some time with him. And he said, Jim... We think the secret is archaea. Archaea? Archaea are what we call the extremophiles. Those are the, those are the microbes that live in the mud pots and in the Yellowstone Park. Or, okay. Uh, you know, the spouts, the, the volcanic spouts right. underground. The extremophile is an organism that can live in extreme conditions. That's the Great Salt Lake. Uh, a lot of times in the ocean and other areas. This guy told me that he said they honestly believe, and they're in a big part of the organic movement up in that area, that they believe that the archaea will have the ability to restructure the DNA that we've destroyed through genetic modification. Wow. So I would have to answer with that because... The, 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 body, the body knows your, your DNA has the blueprint. It's, we just keep breaking up the blueprint. We keep screwing it up. We don't, the, the DNA requires a myriad of minerals to, to even function. The trace minerals, the micro trace minerals, of which we, sometimes we don't get. If we don't get all those minerals, we don't get exact replication of DNA in our body. We get a broken one. So we end up with, with these mutations in our body. And our body, the perfect organism, is trying all the time, oh, this is broken DNA. We've got to clean that up, get it out of here. And then we wonder why we've got cancer and we've got all of these degenerative diseases that all stem from primarily either a mineral deficiency or toxicity. Those are the two big ones. Right, right. And there's so many, so, you know, my... I see people drinking out aluminum cans, and they're getting so much aluminum in their body, yeah. in their brains. So my big concern in all this is what's going to happen genetically. A, will if young men and women are getting this shot, will they even be able to produce? And if they do, what's, what, what's that going to look like? We're not going to know for a while, but... No, the jury's out on that. Yeah. Uh, you know, we... Uh, I can stand on either side of this vaccination issue. Uh, there's pros about it that, that people are proponents of, and then there's the negative parts about it. But I've just never figured out how you can make a person well by cutting, poisoning, or burning them. And so I look at, like, look at it like this. If you're about to get a treatment, if a healthy person went in and got that treatment, would they get better or would it make them sick? Well, most of the time, these treatments that we're giving sick people to, to get well would make a, a healthy person sick. And so how much sense does that make? Doesn't make so, any sense at all. So that so I go, well, I just have, I don't know. I, I'm not a doctor. I can't, I'm not an medical doctor. I can't say. But it really confuses me with what I know. Because with my background, I understand a lot about the functions of the bodies and nutrition and so on like that. And, and sometimes I think, well, how is this going to make us better? Well, you know, I've read all about the mRNA and how they function and, and, and these new so-called vaccines. Uh, they haven't been around long enough for me to be secure with them, I'll say that. Right. 
Yeah, me neither. Well, hey, thanks for stopping in. This has been excellent. <laughs> we can keep going all day, which we pretty much have. <laughs> But hey, so this will be, uh, guys, if you've been listening, we've had went way beyond the time on the fourth segment. So you're going to have to listen to that on the Whole Body Detox podcast, where you can find wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find it on the livingwaterscleanse.com website under podcast. You'll find the link there. You're definitely going to want to download this one and share it with your family members. There's so many nuggets in this one. You probably have to listen to it three or four times. There's a lot of good juicy bits in here. So Jim, thanks so much for coming in. Be sure you get his book, Stop in Zamzos, pick you up some good healthy garden starts and uh, as well as chicken soup for the soil as well to make those, uh, make your strawberries taste like real strawberries. It'll do it. It'll do it. Hey, thanks for joining us. I'm David DeHaas from Living Waters where miracles begin by healing from within. You can't treat the body and heal it a piece at a time. You have to treat the whole body naturally. That's why Living Waters Wellness Center 10-Day Healing Retreat is so successful in helping what I call the incurables back to wellness. Here's what a few clients had to say about their experience at Living Waters Wellness Center. For over a year, I've been dealing with gas pains, and stomach pains, and been waking me up in the middle of the night so I never get a full night's rest. And last night, after my first colonics, I slept through the entire night without any stomach pain or any kind of issues. I suffered from migraine headaches for 12 years, once a month. And since I did the 10 day retreat at Living Waters Wellness Center eight years ago, I have not even had a migraine. I've not even had a headache. I had back pain on my left side for about 20, 25 years. After the 10 day healing retreat, the pain is completely gone. To learn more about the 10-Day Healing Retreat, go to HealingTheIncurables.com or call the office at 208-378-9911. That's 208-378-9911. The presenting examples may not be typical of your experience and may not be right for you. Seek the opinion of a qualified health care professional before determining if cleansing is right for you. I mean, 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 if cleansing is right for you.